Hello there. Um, no artificial intelligence was used in the creation of this talk, and only limited amounts of the other kind. All right, so um, you're here to see Python 3 now. Been using it for a while. As you can see, that's 3.14, since 3.13 is old news for me right now. Um, you might notice that there's a color in the REPL, that's because that's our new interactive shell, uh, borrowed from PyPy. And in fact, this is all a very European talk, right? Like PyPy, mostly a European project, you know, like in Python now took the PyPy REPL and has it. And I have uh, this Swedish synthesizer here, and this is a Eurorack, which is Euro, right? Like uh, founded by Dieter uh, Dupfer, modular synthesizer. Um, this is a German synthesizer, and this is a uh, Novation Launchpad, which is British, so almost European. <laughs> so now, like, I know that you're very excited about like a REPL that allows you to do like fancy stuff, like exit by typing exit. <laughs> but some of you, like, when you uh, saw this on Twitter, you were like, "Hey, I actually want this auto imported thing." And it doesn't work in mine, like why not? Well, be because it's actually not part of this new repo, it's something that you can already have right now. And you uh, have it by just setting Python startup to a thing. And that thing, if you, uh, oh, black, huh? um, if you color it, you see it just runs some function. Why does it run a function? Well, because it auto imports a bunch of things, but there's some special syntax here if I want everything from typing, but no typing itself, if I only want path, but not pathlib itself, if I only want data class, there's some special handling. So there's like a super advanced function here that it just does all of those things, right? So you can also have it. You can find it on my dot .files on, on GitHub or just write it yourself. It, it is easy enough. So in fact, to speed things up and make sound appear here a little faster than it would otherwise, I am using a custom Python startup file for this. Um, and we're gonna be mostly using MIDI in this talk. And the way the MIDI is gonna work is it sends short messages, just a bunch of bytes, to hardware instruments that I have with me. The drum machine, which is analog, the modular synthesizer, which is also analog, and the uh, digital synthesizer right here. Um, so we're gonna send MIDI messages, and we have a bunch of ports here. I get, I get output uh, names. And you can see like some of them are not important for us, but th this one is going to be important since this one, this one is going to be our base. So let's create this one here. Um, we're gonna use the drum machine, so that's gonna be this one right here. Uh -huh. And then Iridium is the digital synthesizer right here. So let's use this one as well. So now having those MIDI outputs, I can just send messages. This is gonna be very verbose, but just to show you what's going on, um, you can essentially just say bass, send, note on, and just say which note you want. And it's just numbers, so you can say 24 with velocity, say 64 on channel zero. And when you do this, a sound appeared, but still held because all we did is note on. So you have to actually send also a note off. This is very verbose, so we're not gonna be using this all the time. Instead, what we will be doing is uh, writing little, little sequencers. And I have a bunch of those. I can create, I, I don't know, like, uh, I'm gonna be one indexing here. I'm very sorry, but like when I see this pad right here, I'm thinking one, I'm not thinking zero, I'm, I'm sorry. So, um, for i in range 165. And now we're gonna see, okay, we have sequencer objects. They're, um, they're empty, they don't do anything yet. Uh, so when in uh, Ableton Live, which is only our mixer today and our clock, we send the clock, we start it. Okay, now those things are running. How can you tell? Well, you can't because they don't play any notes yet. So how about we actually use those lights to show you a bunch of things? So I had like, um, um, so we can actually import, uh, inspect, and see some of the source here. Mm, so print, uh, inspect, get source of this play function that we have here. Uh, list object doesn't have play, but the first sequencer is gonna have play. 
Yes, so as you can see, it, all it does is it waits, uh, waits for the next beat. Nothing very interesting. But I have like this special thing that I can use, which is like a light show. That's going to just show a bunch of blinking lights, right? We love blinking lights, so let's actually attempt this right now. So we can just say for any sequencer, let's replace the play with this light show. And now, okay, they actually blink in time. Uh, this is good, however, um, you might notice that they will slow down if I slow down with the clock, so they're synchronized. This is good. I like this, which means they're going to actually play in tempo. This is a little annoying that there's too many of them, so we can turn them off, right? Uh, let's do it quickly. So we're only going to enable the ones that we want to use later on. Right, so if I enable a bunch of them, you can see they're going to be enabled actually in sync, right? So we can actually use this as a performance tool. Pretty cool. Right. But now, let's make some sounds appear. So first of all, in our sequencer one, we want to change our play function to do something interesting. And Python is a little annoying here because I cannot just say def as one play and self and just change stuff. That, that is not possible. So what I would like to do is to say s1 play uh, and assign it to some function, right? Uh, for example, I don't know, I would have this uh, uh, function that just uh, essentially takes the self and just says, just as we had before, wait for beat, right? That would be the simplest thing that we can do here. But you will see that this actually raises an exception because the self is not passed to an object. We need to play with the descriptor thing. So I made um, this sort of shortcut for me where I can show you how it works. Uh, inspect get source method on. That's how I call it. And it's a decorator, which for a class only just assigns the function that we're going to have under the decorator um, as an attribute. But for an object, we actually have to do the descriptor dance, right? So now we can actually say method on and start doing things. But that is still very verbose, so what I did is use this straight on a sequencer. So if you see this, that just means it's method on sequencer one, and I can now say play self, and we can start actually emitting notes. Only if you emit a note now, let's say like zero is gonna be the first note that is possible ever, we're not gonna hear anything because we have to say that this sequencer, the output goes to the drum machine. And uh, soon enough, we should be hearing something, but we're not. Let's see what's going on. Joy of life demos. Right, so sequencer one, which is right here. It is playing. Oh, it is not playing because it's dead because it raised an exception. We need to create a new one. And now do the same thing. Ah, see, that's the thing. And now, now this is going to play or no? Okay, let's. Uh, see what we can do with sequencer, say, 9 on the base and see if that works for us. So let's have play here and play a base note of C. So it's going to be, say, C to with velocity of 72. I cannot hear anything right now emitted, uh, but we're going to debug this soon enough. So, uh, with our MIDI out that we had base, we did emit successfully notes, right? So let's try this again and see what's going to happen now. That does play. So there is sound. So what is going on here? I do have play, I do have everything. It doesn't emit anything, which is somewhat disappointing. Okay, now we are playing because I enabled the sequencer. That helps. All right. It is a little aggressively doing things, so let's slow it a little bit down. Uh, for example, by saying wait for bar. So it's going to just play one note. Okay. Now it's a bass. Okay, cool. But I'm still a little disappointed by our kick not playing, right? And the note four should play on our first sequencer that should go here. And we can see, 
Okay, sound should come here. So let's debug this together right now. All right. Mm -hmm -hmm. We have a node. Uh, node is zero. We are on the sequencer one. Uh, sequencer one. Okay, output this drum. Oh, okay, now we're talking. So we can now start it again. Yeah, when I recreated the sequencer, I forgot to assign output to it again. Well, okay. Um, doing stuff live is really stressful, well, I can tell you this much. <laughs> but I'm showing you a rap all, right? So essentially the music part is maybe it's just a little bit secondary, right? Like, you know, let's just, let's just play with the colors here and see multi-line editing, which uh, works really nicely here. Right, so as you can see, the play thing like restarts every, um, like, you know, restarts after it finishes, so I don't actually have to loop anything. Um, I could, but um, let's move to some more interesting melodies on the bass, since I brought it and like we're just playing one note. So now that we're back on track, we can actually do something interesting. So as you can see, we have the C thing here, uh, and the reason why is that like C, like, and all of the nodes actually in MIDI are just numbers, so like C0 would be 12, C4 would be 60, well, I don't remember all those things. Like, so I can know that like C, um, like every octave goes plus 12, but if you ask me what is F sharp, then I wouldn't really know like right away, like of octave five. So I have all of those things. The only problem is that F sharp, I needed to type like this because obviously, um, there is no sharp in Python. And you would think, well, I can actually assign nice uh, variables, right, like with Unicode, so I should be able to also do this with this magically nice character that is called, uh, I kind of type and say this thing at the same time, music sharp sign. It is, it is actually not hash, it is this nice thing that like this is where the name C sharp comes from, right? So you would want to do like that C sharp is CS because I, I want this, but we cannot have this for whatever reason. And I'm like, well, if I had some like good mode in Python and I could like, you know, just type, type in some cheat codes, like maybe I could have this, but unfortunately this character is in the wrong uh, Unicode block, so it is actively disallowed in the Python, um, um, you know, to use as an identifier. Maybe because it's confusingly close to something else, I don't know. Um, but you know, like in my day, when I was playing games and whatnot, like, like Doom or whatnot, you would just say IDDQD, and stuff would happen. <laughs> so maybe now, asking the parser gods, we have the premium subscription level now to the parser. We can actually do this. <laughs> and now we can actually be very musical about those things, right? And I like this, uh, but it is a little annoying for me to type this thing all the time because like I need it, I cannot just type music sharp sign, I need to paste it in. That, that is not good. So, if our REPL was in Python, I could maybe from PyREPL, a uh, simple interact, import uh, get reader, which is a line reader that we are using right now. Uh, invalid syntax because I did something wrong here. Oh, uh, I, actually, I, I, I don't call it, yeah, yeah sure. Um, so now that get reader, it's actually that reader that processes all what that you're getting. So for example, it has this get Unicode method, and it actually returns what I just typed, right? Okay, cool. So what if we used the method on reader and changed it? So now we have get Unicode, which normally what it just does is it joins the buffer, but now we're gonna return that, but replace some useless character that we'll never use in a REPL, like hash and actually say that it's like a music sharp sign. Uh, cool, does that look good to you? Looks fine to me. Right, so now when we actually say C sharp, uh, C hash, it is C sharp, it's the same thing. <laughs> so now we can actually now do some melodies, right? Huh? So let's do them. Uh, the nice thing about those sequencers that I wrote and showed you is that uh, 
there can be many of them. So we have already this base node that is on the new bar. We can create another sequencer, like sequencer 10. Uh, and the out is going to be the base, and the uh, function that we're going to put it on is going to wait a bit, like say, wait a beat, right? So self wait for beat, and then it's going to play a bunch of like, do -do 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 -do, right? So let's do n16. So those are sixteenths of a bar, so it's shorter than n4. Four, that's a quarter of a bar. Uh, so now we can actually do like C2, we can do uh, C3, we can do another C2, um, and we can do, I, I don't know, like a G, right? Um, let's just let's do G2. And let's wait for another bar. We just need to, now I know, turn it on actually. Okay, cool. So, I didn't bring this entire thing just because it can do like those like very um, shy notes. Like it can actually play like pretty aggressively, so just be prepared. Um, what it has is like a really nice filter, which is now turned all the way down. But we can turn it up a little bit. So if we took um, another sequencer, like 11, uh, also use it for bass, and say in our method that what we want to use is um, some kind of MIDI control. So here you have like a sustain pedal, you can have another that is an expression pedal, right? Like it's a foot pedal. Uh, there can be a mod wheel that you have here and whatnot. So we can actually say this much, that I'm going to be changing the foot pedal with some values. They go from 0 to 127. So let's start with 127. And uh, while V is bigger than 0, we're going to be sending the foot pedal with this value and maybe waiting just for one pulse of the MIDI clock. And let's see what's going to happen. Right. It's something more interesting now. So now with S9, we can transpose the note that we have here to something more interesting, like 3 up. S9. Oh, because we just said that this is supposed to play this particular note, it should still allow us to transpose or no. Yeah, I think so. Let's try a higher note and see. for us for a bit and then I'm going to find what, the, what is happening right now in due time. For example, I said that we have mod wheel, we have the foot controller. We can put this mod wheel higher, which will change the um, tim timbre of the sound quite a bit. And then we can play with some drums. Right. And now if we change our uh, sweep over those guys, we can change it to some more sensible values. And you, as you can see, the, ti uh, the timer changes quite a bit. Right. So, okay, let's keep it maybe at 30 and here like 90. Cool. So, this uh, poor drum machine is only playing a single note right now. Let's actually use some more of those nice sounds that it provides. So here we are not doing much, so let's uh, do something on sequencer two. For example, a hi-hat. Hi-hats are those interesting things where like, you know, there are symbols, but if you open a hi-hat and then um, play a closed hi-hat, it's gonna choke, which means stop playing the long one. So let's start with the short one, actually. 
and just do something more Pythonic because now we were only like, you know, just emitting, emitting, emitting just lines. Now we can actually just play with the fact that we have, um, we have code here. So we're gonna play a 16th and I need to count, this is the eighth note on the out. Now the out is going to be drum. Uh, out is drum. Oh no. Okay, that is very boring. But what we can say is maybe if random random is bigger than, I don't know, 0 0.3 or bigger than 0 0.7, that's actually 30%, right? Then we're gonna wait for a 16th. Now it's random, it's more interesting, cool. That's very mechanic because it only uses the same volume here now, which is this default volume is probably 72 or something. But again, we can say that it should use the volume 80 plus random random uh, times say 32. And now there's gonna be some um, kind of variability in volume. Actually, let's super exaggerate it so we can actually hear this, what is going on here. So from zero, as you can see, some of them are quieter, some of them are louder. But we don't want that much variety, so let's just do this. It is called humanization. It like sounds more, um, more well like what a human could actually play. And now in S3, we can again just do an output of drum and add our um, open hi hat, which is going to be choked by this thing every now and again. So let's just say it should wait an eight and play an eight. Uh, and it's going to play an eight on the next note. And let's just say uh, it should be like volume one, one eight. So let's see what's gonna happen now. Okay, only I uh, overwritten what we just had, which is not a problem because uh, in the repo we can just come back where we were. Okay, and now actually assign this to three. Uh, no, not, not this one. What am I doing? Oh, okay. Finally, we have arrived. Okay, cool. Mm. So, it's four. Um, let's also make this a drum and just make a snare and then the entire beat, let's say, it's now uh, complete, right? So, S4 uh, is going to be so self, self, self. You know what, no, I, I'm sick and tired of like writing self all the time. This is not good for life coding. What if I could have like a shortcut, like just write self for me. But you know, like Python didn't really give me this functionality that like seriously there should be a pep, like you know. But, but there is nothing like that. But if this was written in Python, I could maybe say from pyrepl commands import command and just say that I really want a comment that is, I don't know, some auto self thing. And when it's done, uh, what I want is for the reader, you already met the reader, to just insert self dot. Would that be cool? I think it would be cool. But you know, now, how does it know about the command? Well, the reader that we already know, uh, we would need to say that it's commands. We name this as auto self. We assign that as auto self. And now we have to bind it to some shortcut, let's say, Control S, because who needs forward searching in uh, Iraq? I don't know. Um, so let's just as actually assign this to this named command that is all self. So now I can press Control S, and there's self. That's going to be faster. Maybe we'll even finish in time. Right. So again, S4. Let's do this thing, and maybe I'm going to remember to actually use the shortcut I just defined. Uh, so first, let's wait for uh, a quarter and just play a note that is a quarter, like the snare that is uh, note one on the drum machine. But I need to turn it on. No, it is turned on. S4, one, two, three, four. Did I actually say that it's a drum? I did say it's a drum. Uh, one, two, three, four, it is playing. So what is happening right now? Oh, I don't. I just don't hear it in the in the in the monitor. Okay, so if you hear it, that's good. Uh, for me to hear it, maybe let's just make it super loud. Okay, now I hear it too. Okay, cool. So now I have this third synthesizer that so far has been a little bit like underutilized by us. 
so maybe we can utilize it. So now that we have this magic functionality of being able to uh, define some phrases or like note melodies, we can just say like, you know, phrase equals and let's say C5, G5, um, A sharp 5, because now we can say that, right? And then F5 and then maybe C6. Um, okay, those are some notes. So now on the third um, place here, what we're gonna do is what? Uh, 1, 9, 17, S17. We're gonna want to play, let's say, sixth. One of those notes. So again, random choice from phrase. This is gonna play something as soon as I set the output to Iridium and actually turn it on. Can we hear it now? Because I cannot, but we're gonna fix this soon enough. I know already what happened. Iridium is kind of weird and it wants a different MIDI channel. Okay, right, so now we have some melody happening and we can maybe attempt this transposing because I wanted for to show you transposing which I made like built in into this sort of thing and it didn't do anything. If it really is opposing us, we're just gonna re-implement it right now. So let's see what's gonna happen. So S1 uh, has a transpose of zero. If we set it to three, it doesn't do anything, but it should. We can, I can actually prove to you that it should do something by print uh, inspect get source um, S1N, that is a generic method to, uh, to play notes. And as you can see, there is self T, and if we have a T, then it should transport. For whatever reason it doesn't, it's probably a very stupid reason and I'm gonna be very disappointed and you know uh, ashamed when I see the video later on. Um, but since this thing doesn't really want us to um, have transposition built in, we can just re-implement it. So um, for S1, well, that was already printing our notes nicely. That's S1, that is, no, that, that's the kick drum, I'm sorry. So S9 actually. S9. Yeah, that's the one. We can actually just give it plus T here ourselves and see what's gonna happen. And now S9, T. Now it works. Okay, so since those parameters are sort of interesting, but it's very boring for you to just see me just type things in to change them, we can use another sequencer to just do that automatically for us. So let's actually do that now. Uh, so we have what? One, nine, 17, uh, plus another eight, that would be 25. So let's take our sequencer 25, and the only thing that it's going to be doing it's, it's going to be setting this note to something and then waiting for bar and then setting it to something else like this uh, higher version and then let's wait for another bar and now uh, let's, oh no, not a self, S9 uh, T5 and now I'll wait for another bar and now, I don't know, let's do with it a high note uh, at the end. Okay, I again need to make sure that it plays. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Something is playing, definitely. That's a good. That's good news for us. What's even interesting is like now I can actually do like um, calculations on this. So for example, I can say, I want to know what's the transposition that I would need between those two notes. And it's gonna calculate the, the, the actual thing that I need. 
Okay, it, and it plays, right? And I can say disable the uh, hi hats if you want. Maybe all those bubbles, we can also disable them for a bit. So, if you already expect that there's something weird that is happening here, good for you. If you don't, um, I might share a secret now. Now that you see all those things playing, that in fact what is happening is each of those sequencers, right, is, okay, that's a type, that, that, we, that much we already knew. Um, but let's say we actually check what tuple couple secret. Ah, it's a, just a tuple, right? Yes, of course. This is in fact a thread, right? So all those things that I have here are in fact threads. And this thing that I'm showing you would not be possible for me to demonstrate on Python 3.12. And the reason why not is that. As Gil on itself says, I, I, I like self now. Yeah, the gill is disabled, right? So all of this are actual threads running super free on this particular laptop um, that only has 10 cores, but 64 threads are fine for that. Uh, you can use quite a lot of um, computation there and one thread that hogs a core will not cause the others to not stop responding. So this is something that actually now allows us to um, do pretty much real-time programming with Python and actually utilize all the hardware that you have here, which I find really fun. Um, and also, if we actually go back and edit all those uh, sequencers that I've been showing, this is literally something that, like, imagine doing this in 3.12 in the old repo. Like, we'd probably not want to do that, right? Um, but now, with Python 3.13 uh, or 3.14 with the premium subscription to the um, parser, we can actually get pretty far with this. So, I like all of this, and uh, the thing that I like the most about this is that this is really now actually a performance tool. Right? You can do a lot of things with this where it starts doing a thing, and it's perfectly fine for you to just now play on top of this. So you can play, I don't know, like a, a fill on the drum machine, right? Or you can just go ahead and um, play this guy, right? I spend my free time. Right, what else can I show you really here? There is plenty of stuff that is now available in PyRepo and you can hack on things. I showed you two examples there. Um, the thing that I would want to instill in you, that like, you know, as much as it is fun, um, PyRepo is still imported from underscore PyRepo. So I invite you to hack on Python. I invite you to see how that thing works. But don't write production code on this because uh, it's underscore PyRepo. We might change it still quite a bit later on. Um, but it's now in Python, which means it is very easy for you to contribute to it, which I find extremely interesting uh, because you think, okay, maybe somebody else is going to contribute. We saw like a boom, like an explosion of, contributor, uh, of contributors just because that piece of Python is now in Python. Um, and if that actually sounds interesting and what I showed sounds interesting. We have plenty of bugs and we have plenty of features that we would like for Python 3.14, like syntax highlighting, like, you know, more niceties that you can add. Because now we have, you know, the, the comments that you already know, like, you know, kind of you can do F1 and you have help and you can say quit to leave help and whatnot and whatnot. That, that is all cute, right? And we even have a clear, to clear the, the screen as a command. We can add more of that stuff, right? We can actually make things more helpful to the user later. 
um, you can hack on this tomorrow at the sprint. Uh, there's a C Python sprint, and PyRepo is a perfectly fine entrance to uh, contributing to Python. Um, so right, let's now have some questions, since normally I don't take questions at um, keynotes or at my talks, because I say, I'm here all week. You can see me at the rest of the conference, but since there's not a rest of the conference after this, um, if you have any questions, let's have them now. Let me just stop the thing. Right. Hello. So, do you see this new repo replacing IPython in the near future, or do you expect there is, or do you know about some things that are in IPython and you don't expect them to make their way into this new repo? Right, uh, we don't intend to compete with IPython. There's plenty of really bad decisions that IPython made. No, no, no. <laughs> no like. What you need to understand is um, um, like the REPL that we have in Python right now, um, thanks to Carol insisting on it, like is available on all tier one platforms of Python. It is there by default, we support it. So it is still in many ways limited compared to what IPython allows you to do. Uh, IPython has magics that are extremely useful, right, for many things. I don't foresee us actually implementing this. This is a little bit too, out there, right? Because people have, will have different opinions on where that should go. So IPython, like, we, we don't intend to like remove the need for it. We don't intend to replace it. In fact, um, very often when people come to us say, oh, this new REPL is great. However, it behaves different from IPython. Like, this on its own is not yet a valid, you know, kind of bug report for us. Um, maybe the way the uh, REPL for us behaves right now is insane, and then like, okay, the IPython doing something else is a good uh, kind of anecdotal evidence that we should do something else, but we don't intend to copy it, right? Thank you. All right. I see there's, a, oh, okay, another question. Do you have an album? Uh, yes, indeed, I do. Uh, so first of all, you might have seen this in the repo at first, but maybe you forgot it now. If you are into this sort of th stuff, like you can just see the document um, right there. And what I can show you is, yeah, I indeed do some music on the side. Um, let's see what it's gonna show you now. Firefox, be a little faster to people here. Come on, come on. All right, world class multitasking, see? <laughs> That's no gill right now, free threaded Python. Um, right, so replicator, RPL KTR, since I, uh, I don't like the obvious uh, things that you can do. So releases, yeah, I did in fact release an album um, that is on streaming and whatnot. So you can check whether things that I actually do at home are a little more refined than what I usually do right now, which I hope they are. Um, right, yes. So thanks for sharing the, the cheat code to, the, to get the sharp signs on the, <laughs> on the buzzer. Uh, but I think what everybody wants to know here, what's the cheat code to be able to use emoji as identifiers? Emoji as identifiers. Um, so you mean like what? Like if I actually went to the uh, editor right now and, and actually attempted like this sign and say one, that's a premium subscription. You can do anything. So you can print this thing, and it's gonna print one. So, hi, what, Radomir. Hi. Once you figure out what was wrong with the transposition thing, yeah? will you tell us? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I will, I will <laughs> post about it on Mastodon. Uh, if I figure out like why that thing wasn't actually doing anything, but when we did it manually, it did. Unfortunately, we were live coding, so we could fix it right away. I have a question related to the emojis. Is it possible for those character replacement to be on compound characters? So you can like type ASCII emoji and it replaces it with the Unicode emoji? 
Uh, can you redefine, like, can, can you rephrase? Like so, that? I mean, like, for example, if you want to type in, like, semicolon parenthesis, uh -huh. that would be two characters. Would yes. you be able to replace that with the emoji, the Unicode emoji, smile emoji? So, basically, when you did the C The sharp, replacement for, the, yeah, replacement, yeah. Is that only one character? Yeah, so if you can do it for compound. We could hack PyRepo to do this, but... And like, you know, kind of a senior engineer is now looking me in the eye. Like you already know that if you're replacing two characters with one, the things are gonna be wonky in the, in the REPL. So we would need to be a little more careful uh, to actually do this transformation. This, this, this one I could just type in like three lines of code, uh, replacing one character with two or two with one and so on and so on. That would be a tiny bit more complicated to get right. Yeah, but yes, we, we could do that. All right, no further questions. Thank you very much. I have some time to pack up before lightning talks. <laughs>